question one, write the number 3502 in figures. To help me do this, I'd like putting down the player settings, so thousands, hundreds, tens and units. 3502 units. You can see that there are no tens in there, but you still need to put a zero in, so 3502. Write the number 2019 in words, so that's 2019. Write down the value of seven in this number, well that stands for seven tens or 70, either of these will be fine. Write 6718 correct to the nearest hundred, will be 6700. Question two, this side has six sides, so it is a hexagon, and this side has ten sides, so it is a decagon. Question three, the table shows some information about seven different mobile phones. Write down the name of the most expensive mobile phone. So if we go down the price list, we can see that £42 is the most expensive, which is the PK340. Write down the price of the cheapest mobile phone that has a music player and a radio. So I've circled the ones that have a music player and a radio, and you can see that the cheapest one is the PK390, which is £35. Work out the difference between the weight of the heaviest mobile phone and the weight of the lightest mobile phone. Going down the weight column, we can see that the heaviest is 102 and the lightest is 77. If we take those away from each other, I've done it in a written method there, but obviously it's a calculator paper. The answer is 25 grams. Question four, A part one. What type of angle is H? Well, it's less than 90 degrees, so it's acute. Measure the size of angle H. For this, you need a protractor. Put the protractor crosshair at the corner of the shape. Line up as accurately as you can. Look from zero and go up and you'll see it's at 65 degrees. Measure, sorry, part B, work out the value of X. Well, we know that angle's on a straight line up to 180. So we do a 180 take away 127, which is 53. And the reason for that is angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. Question five, a film starts at 550 and ends at 7.30. How long does it last? Well, that is one hour and 40 minutes. To do that, you can go 10 minutes up till six o'clock, another hour till seven o'clock, so that's an hour and 10, and then add the 30 minutes on, an hour and 40. Jackie buys some tickets to see the film. Each ticket costs £4.50, and she pays with two £20 notes and gets £8.50 change. How many tickets did she buy? Well, if we take the change off £40, £40 is the two £20 notes, then she must have spent £31.50, and if we divide that by £4.50, the cost for each ticket, using a calculator, that will give us seven. Question six, here are the first five terms of a number sequence. Write down the next two terms of this sequence. Well, it's going down or decreasing by three. So if we take three off 28, we get 25. Take three off again, we get 22. Explain how you got your answer. Subtract three from the previous term. Here are the first five terms of a different number sequence. Find the eighth term. So we've got the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So the sixth, you can see it's going up by five each time, will be 13, then 18, then 23 for the eighth term. So the answer is 23. Question seven, write down the fraction of the shape that is shaded. There are one, two, three, four, five shaded in, and five, six, seven, eight, nine all together. So it's five ninths. Shade 30% of this shape, well there are 10 squares, so that means that each square is worth 10%, because 100% divided by 10 is 10. So we need to call in three squares. Any three squares colored in is fine. Question C, work out two thirds of 120. To do that, you divide by the bottom, so 120 divided by three, which is 40. Again, you can use a calculator for that. And then 40 times two is 80. Question eight, Lev counts the number of bicycles and the number of motorbikes that he sees on each of five mornings and gets these results. Lev wants to compare this information on the grid, draw a suitable chart or diagram. Well, you can choose several different uh, ways of doing this, but I've decided to do a dual bar chart. So you can see that I've labelled the different days, and I've done a key. The empty bars are the bicycles, and the shaded in bars are the motorcycles. The biggest number on here is 13, so I've gone on the frequency up to 13, starting at 0. It's very important that each square goes up by 1, so these are all equally spaced out. And along the bottom, the two bars for each day can be touching, but there needs to be a gap between each pair of bars. Okay, so it's not very clear, but... There's a gap there, and then a bar and a bar, gap, bar, bar, gap, and so on. 
Make sure the tops of these are all in the correct places. So that one should be at 10 and that one at 5 for Monday. 12 and 4 for Tuesday. 12 and 7 for Wednesday. 13 and 2 for Thursday. 8 and 6 for Friday. The four marks are for all the bars being at the correct height. One mark. All the bars being the correct width and having a gap between them. Two marks. Equally spaced out frequency on the side. Three marks. And clearly labelled uh, axis on the bottom. Four marks. Question nine. Johnny's walking along the path and sees this sign. How far is it from the pier to the cafe along this path? Well, if it's 650 metres to the cafe and 1.25 kilometres, which if we times by 1,000, because there's 1,000 metres in a kilometre, is 1,250 metres. If we add those two distances together, we'll get the distance between the two. So add those together. It's 1,900 metres or 1.9 kilometres. Either is fine. There was one mark for converting either of those to metres or kilometres, one mark for adding them up, and one mark for putting your final answer. Question 10, here's a number machine, complete the table. So you can see here that we're going to divide by 4, so 8 divided by 4 is 2, then add 7 gives us 9, so you can see that that works. 12 divided by 4 is 3, add 7 gives us 10. And then to work backwards, we need to start with 27 and subtract 7, which gives us 20, and then times by 4, which gives us 80. Question 11, write down the coordinates of the point M. The point M is here, so you go along the corridor and up the drive. It's at 8, 1. LM is the shortest side of an isosceles triangle. Mark with a cross a point N, so that L and M is an isosceles triangle. Now, we need to mark a point somewhere above the midpoint of this line. So the middle of this line is at 5, so we can mark a point along here. Now, because this line is 6 long, and that is the shorter side, to be safe, I have gone 6 up then started anywhere from there. So any of these points, anywhere from here upwards, would be correct. So any of these coordinates here. Question 12. Here's a shaded shape drawn on a centimetre grid. How many lines of symmetry does it have? It has one straight down the middle there. Find the perimeter of the shape. If you add up all the sides here as you go along, not counting the squares, but counting the sides, as you can see, I've marked them off, you get 26 centimetres. Here's a rectangle, work out its area. Well, to work out the area of a rectangle, you do uh, length times width, so 16 times 9 is 144. Again, you can use a calculator for that. Question 13. Jan writes down one multiple of 9 and two different factors of 40. Jan adds her three numbers together and she gets an answer between 20 and 30. Write down what the three numbers that she could have used. Well, to help me do this, I've written all the factors of 40 here and a few multiples of 9 here. And I've just chosen any three that add together between 20 and 30. I've chosen 4, 10 and 9. Provided it is one of these numbers, uh, sorry, one of these numbers and two of these numbers, and they add together to a number between 20 and 30, not including 20 and not including 30, then your answer is fine. One mark for each number. Question 14. Vicky counts the number of birds in her garden at ATM on each of 10 days. Write down the mode. Mode is the one that occurs the most, and you see that 2 occurs 3 times, so the answer is 2. Work out the mean. To work out the mean, we add them all together. So if you add all these numbers together, you get 40, and divide by how many there are, which is 10 numbers, so the answer is 4. Vicky counts the number of birds in her garden at 5pm on each of 20 days. She records information in her frequency table. Work out the total number of birds recorded in the frequency table. Well, on 3 days, she recorded no birds, so that's no, no birds at all. Two days she recorded one, so that's two birds. Three days she recorded two birds, so that's six you saw there. On four days she recorded three birds, so that's 12, and so on. And if we add those up, you'll get 55 birds. Question 15. Brian makes egg cups. He makes egg cups, 12 egg cups per hour. Brian makes egg cups for four and a half hours each day on five days of the week, and the egg cups are packed into boxes with eight egg cups are packed into each box. How many boxes does he need for the five days? Well, if he makes 12 every hour for four and a half hours over five days, we do 12 times four and a half times five. Again, you can use a calculator for that, but I've done that in two stages, which will give me 270. There are then eight in each box, so 270 divided by eight gives me an answer of 33 remainder six, or 33.75 if you did it on a calculator. That means you must need 34 boxes. 
Question 16. Use a word from the box what uh, best describes the probability of each of the following events. When you throw an ordinary uh, coin, you get a tail. Well, there's only heads or tails, so the answer is evens. When you throw an ordinary dice, you get a number less than 7. Well, all numbers on an ordinary dice are less than 7, so that will be certain. Bill has some counters in a bag, three reds, seven blues, and the rest are yellow. It takes a counter at random, and the probability of it being yellow is two sevenths. How many yellows are there in the bag? Well, we can see that uh, this fraction is out of seven, and we've already got ten counters in the bag, so this must have been cancelled down. So if we multiply it up, that will be four out of 14. So that means there are four yellow counters out of 14 altogether, and then three at seven at four would give me 14, so that would work. So the answer is four yellow counters. Question 17, reflect the shaded triangle in the y-axis. This is the y-axis down here. It's two squares away, so I need to reflect it two squares away again into there. Question 18, there are 80 litres of petrol in a uh, petrol tank of car A and 16 gallons in car B. Which car has the most petrol in the tank? Well, you can see that the gallons doesn't go up to 16 and the litres doesn't go up to 80. So we've got a choice here. We can either convert 40 litres or some amount of litres and then and make it out of 80 or we can convert some amount of gallons and make it out of 16 I've chosen to work out 8 gallons to be 36 litres using the graph so if I times that by 2 I get 16 gallons is 72 litres so car B has 72 litres so car A must have the most petrol in Question 19. Plants are sold in three different sizes of tray. A small tray of 30 plants costs £6.50. Medium tray of 40 plants is 8 95 And a large tray of 50 plants is 10 99 Kaz wants to buy a tray with the best value for money. Which uh, tray should you buy? Well, you've got to calculate here. So if I do £6.50 divided by 30, that gets gives me 0 0.2166666. That's 21 and a bit pence per plant. Do the same for the, the medium tray gives me about 22 pence per plant and same for the large tray again that gives me 21 pence but slightly more of the part of a pence there because that's nine and that's a six so that means that the small tray must cost her less so that's the best value for money question 20 pat has x cards and jim has four cards more than pat write down an expression in terms of x for the number of cards jim has well, Pat has X, he has four more, so it's X plus four. Lex has two times as many as Pat. Write down an expression in terms of X for the amount that Lex has. Well, if Pat has X and he has twice as many, you do it's two X. Question 21. Linda is buying wool to knit a baby's blanket. She needs 1,800 yards of wool. Linda chooses some balls of wool and they come in 240 metres per ball. She knows that one yard is 36 inches and one inch is 2.54 centimetres. How many balls of wool does she need? Well, 1,800 yards. If we times that by 36, it will convert it to inches. And then times that by 2.54, that convert it to centimetres. So that's 164,592 centimetres. If we divide that by 100, we get 1,645.92 metres is what she needs. If we divide that by 245, the amount per ball, then we get 6.718, etc. balls. So she needs to buy seven balls of wool because she can't just buy 6.7 balls. She needs to buy seven. So the answer is seven. Question 22. Use your calculator to work out 5.9 squared. You get 34.81. Use your calculator to work out the square root of 500 plus 12.8. The entire calculator display is this, 35.16067977. Round your answer to part one to one decimal place. So that with 35.2, because the 6 rounds the 1 up to a 2, so 35.2. Solve this. Well, there are 5 E's there, so 5 E is 45. So 1 E, if you divide 45 by 5, you get 9. Solve 18 minus X equals 13. Well, X must be 5, because 18 take away 5 is 13. Solve this. First of all, I would expand the brackets to give me 2Y minus 10 equals 24. Then add the 10 to both sides, it gives me 2y equals 34. I divide by 2, I get y is 17. Factorise this. Well, 5 goes into both 15 and 40. So if I pull 5 outside the brackets, I would then need to times that by 3p to get to 15p, and by 8 to get back to 40. Question 24. The diagram shows a pattern using four identical rhombuses. 
work out the size of the angle marked here. Well, first of all, we can work out this angle that I've marked X. We know that a full circle adds up to 360. And if we take these four lots of 25 off 360 and then divide it up into four pieces for these uh, for X's, then we can work out that 360 minus is four lots of 25 and divide that by four is 260 divided by four, which is 65. So X must be 65. In a rhombus, opposite angles are equal. So if that's 65, so is that. So 65 and 65 is 130. And because there's a quadrilateral, angles in a quadrilateral are up to 360, we can do 360 minus that 130 is 230, and then half it because there are two of these, so that's 115 degrees. Question 25. The same type of computer is sold in two shops. What is the difference? So the important word there is difference in the cost between beta computers and computer world uh, and, and computer logic. So at computer world, you get 15% off. So the best way of doing that is by times it by 0.85. Basically finding 85% of the price uh, using a calculator. You get £305.15. You can do that finding 10% and 5% adding together and taking it off, but you should still get the same price. There is £305.15. Um, at Logic Computers, you get put £110 down and you pay 12 lots of £16.80. If you put that into your calculator, you get £311.60. The difference is when you take these two away from each other, you get £6.45. Question 26. When you see a question like this, it's best to draw a two-way table. So they always look the same. It tells you how many students and, and so on are in, in, in each class. There are French, Spanish and German classes and there are men and women in each. If the numbers in circles are the numbers from this information. So 130 adults in total, I've put that here. 96 are women, so I've put that here. 12 women study French, so I could put that in the French women part. 73 adults study Spanish, so I could put that in the total adults for Spanish. 55 women study Spanish, so again I could put that in the women for Spanish. And 9 men study German, so 9 men are German. I can then say that 130 take away 96 is 34. There are 34 men altogether. 73 take away 55 means there are 18 men did Spanish. 9 add 18 um, gives me 27. Take that off 34 gives me 7 men did French, which means there must have been 19 adults altogether that did French. One mark for each of those four numbers. Question 27. A circle has a diameter of 140 centimetres. Work out the circumference of the circle. Give your answer to three significant figures. Well, the circumference of a circle, you do pi times the diameter. So that's pi times 140, which gives you this. And to three significant figures, that would be 440, because the 8 rounds the 9 up, and then the 9 would become, uh, the 39 would become 40, so 440. Question 28. Axel and Ledner are driving along a motorway. They see a road sign. The road sign shows the distance to junction 8. It also shows the average time drivers will take to get to junction 8. The speed limit for the motorway is 70 miles per hour. Lethner says we will have to drive faster than the speed limit to go 30 miles in 26 minutes. Is she correct? Well, the best way to do this is to work out what speed you would have to do to do that. So we know that speed equals distance over time. So 30 miles divided by 26 minutes gives us 1.1538 uh, miles per minute. Leave the entire display on your calculator. Because if we times that by 60 to get the miles per hour, we get 69.2307, miles per hour. And we can see that that is less than 70, so no, she is wrong. Question 29. 